What's going on with my little video and this might be coming out a bit later than the actual game just because of stuff I couldn't control but better late than never and this video I don't really think will be much of a match review it's going to be talking about just in general Chelsea, Potter and everything that's been talked about because the meltdown has been crazy and I just want to try and apply context to everything that's happened should everyone be panicking like they should be for me, no. I don't think there's going to be much structure to this video. I'm probably just going to take it in one. But I think with Graham Potter, a lot of people, you have a lot of people on different sides. And Twitter, you always have to say with a pinch of salt because it never really represents the fan base. But people are going too crazy. Some people are saying Graham Potter needs to go now. But most people are just comparing it to Tuchel, trying to go crazy about the whole situation. I think that's what is important to be talked about in this video, which is what I'm going to try and get an understanding of. So I think firstly, we'll talk about this game very quickly. I think you definitely have to acknowledge that Graham Potter got some stuff wrong. Like... For example, putting the wingers at wing backs, 100%. And th there has to be fair criticism. If Graham Potter's got something wrong, you have to be fair and give criticism to it. And I think he did get that wrong. And he's got a couple things wrong since being a Chelsea manager. But equally, every manager gets stuff wrong. So call it out for every manager in a constructive way. I think that's completely fair. The problem lies for me is when people compare it to Tuchel. They completely lack context. They don't talk about how it was going under Tuchel. And they don't talk about the situation that we're in, the holes in the squad that Graham Potter's had to carry over from Tuchel. Now, this video, I promise you, is not meant to be a bash on Tuchel. I'm not, I'm not going to try and bash Tuchel. I'm just going to apply the context that Graham Potter's in and some of it applies to what Tuchel left us with. And sometimes I'll have to mention Tuchel because a lot of people on Twitter and in general are comparing it to Tuchel, saying Tuchel shouldn't have been sacked. Tuchel wouldn't have let this happen even though, even though we lost 4-1 to Brentford. Like we, It was the same result. In fact, it, for me, it was even worse. That result hurt me even more. And I think that people just need to relax. So I think the main thing that people need to realise is, as Tuchel said when he was still here, the same players, the same issues and that's going to be the title of this video because for me we still have huge holes in this squad when we went into the summer transfer window obviously our biggest problem was center backs because we simply didn't have enough people to fill those numbers but a huge problem for us was midfield we didn't have a defensive midfielder and even past that it would have helped to have a creative midfield or just another midfielder because we're so weak in that position and Kante gets injured all the time but just to make it fair because we can't get everyone in the world we needed a defense midfielder for so long we get caught out in transition we sometimes lack control of games etc etc now obviously people who stand Jorginho and stuff like that will get offended by this but this isn't even about Jorginho I'm someone who appreciates Jorginho's qualities I think he has very good qualities on the ball I think he's very useful often keeps us in control of games but you cannot lie that this guy also has deficiencies in transition we get caught out all the time because he's sim not even him the midfield the midfield but he's our only defense midfielder which is part of the problem it's not him it's the fact that he's our only defense midfielder but he can't keep up with the pace of it sometimes we get caught in transition all the time this has been a problem to be honest ever since we lost Matic is pretty much when it started like we've had periods where we've been able to deal with it for example during the Champions League run our system was tailor-made to be able to deal with the deficiencies and we didn't get caught out by it but over time we got found out Jorginho also got overplayed a lot he was playing every single game pretty much and he couldn't keep up with it either and it's just caught up with us and defense midfield in this summer was our biggest issue apart from filling the numbers at center back but we wasted too much time on center backs in this transfer window and when people bring up Tuchel this is one of the things that I talk about all the time firstly you don't need to bring up Tuchel right we've moved on just leave it move on to the next manager and back him because you support Chelsea Football Club so why wouldn't you back your manager to try and achieve the best results the problem is that everyone has a stand culture these days which is the opposite of what football should be for example Chelsea could win but Pulisic didn't score and suddenly they're all up and arms or Pulisic didn't play like support Chelsea not a player I, this is such a weird modern thing that has come around that people support players over clubs and it doesn't help anyone ever and it happens with everyone like you have a huge cult of Mason Mount haters in our club and you have a huge cult of Mason Mount lovers in our club why don't you just stay neutral support Chelsea and just be fair when each player does well if you play it as well and you don't like them you should still celebrate that goal like people are so weird in this fan base genuinely but anyway back on the defensive midfielder thing for me that's the main issue that we didn't solve that issue this summer we left it until deadline day and this is the thing that I bring up a lot of the time when people talk about Tuchel because people bring up Tuchel saying oh he wouldn't have let this happen well he had full reign over what was going to happen this summer in terms of transfers and he decided to leave defense midfield until deadline day he didn't deal with it and that's part of the problem and he didn't even really deal with it then we settled for a deadline day loan move for the second summer in a row he had a meeting with Marina Granovskaya last year and said no to Tukumeni and chose Saul over him 
right? Again, I'm not trying to bash Tuchel, I'm just trying to, trying to apply context to the situation. And if people aren't always comparing to Tuchel, this situation would purely just be talked about by the fact that we don't have a defensive midfield and I wouldn't be linking it to Tuchel because who cares anymore? But since people constantly bring up Tuchel and use it to bash Potter, who's our manager, who we should be backing right now, I have to apply context and mention that Tuchel was the one who left defensive midfield, didn't solve it, and not only defensive midfield, back up our wing back and creativity issues. We don't have enough creativity in this team. We don't at all. And then also the backup wing back issue. We don't have a backup right wing back. For the second season in a row, it is absolutely ruining us. Reece James is the most important player in our team. When he's gone, we are useless. Absolutely useless. Pulisic was our right wing back today. For that first goal, I don't blame him because he's not right wing back, but he was useless. He had no awareness of the situation. And Chalab was pretty much one-on-one -on -one the whole game against Matoma. And people overlapping. It was so hard for him to deal with. And people say that Tuchel realised we need a backup right wing back. Yeah, he did. But the the name that he came up with, for example, Jonathan Klaus, didn't want to be a backup wing back. Carl Walker Peters cost like 40, 45 million and also didn't want to be a back, backup right wing back. That's the reason he left Spurs, so, so as not to be a backup wing back. So why would he come to Chelsea now? It makes no sense when he's playing out of this world at Southampton. Denzel Dumfries clearly was too expensive because we didn't go in for it. People were talking about like 60 million for him. So you can say that Tuchel wanted a backup wing back. He did, obviously. But if you're also, the options that you bring up for that position to play that aren't feasible, well then it's useless to notice it because we didn't solve it and then we ended up going Aspilicueta who's okay to be fair he hasn't been too bad under Potter but under uh, Tuchel he's absolutely terrible and really so we all know that he can't keep up with the pace anymore there's a reason why he doesn't play that Potter doesn't bring him on anymore because he's just too slow and now he's our main back out wing back and if he's not playing then it's Loftus-Cheek who really doesn't have the fitness to play our wing back and also just isn't a right wing back or Pulisic or Sterling and we've realized this game how useless, useless it is so for me, those are the main problems. I think, once again, I'll just reiterate, Potter deserves fair criticism. Obviously, you can't just be, you can't just let a manager off every single time. But, first of all, it's early days. Second, we've only lost one game. Although, to be fair, I think we've we played 10 games, and I'd say five of them, we look shaky. Man United, definitely shaky. We drew that game. Palace, we got the win, but still looked shaky. Brentford, Aston Villa, all shaky games. And then, obviously, this game was terrible too. So, five out of 10 of them, I didn't think were very convincing, even though they kept our unbeaten record alive. So, we shouldn't really be thinking about it as an unbeaten record but the facts are there that this was our first loss in 10 games right and I think Potter will also have to have an adjustment period where at Brighton we all knew that he likes to try weird stuff out for example wingers at wing back and sometimes it doesn't work but I think he's gonna have this adjustment period where he realizes they can't do that at Chelsea all the time because if you lose us points that is a huge issue we can't afford to just drop points because we tried something new and then just move on Brighton for example especially when he first took over and before he made them into a very very good club for the players that they had they could afford maybe to try something new and it didn't work out because they didn't win every single game but the expectations are different at Chelsea and I think that's an adjustment period the Potter will have so criticisms like that are completely fair and how he sets up is completely fair but the fundamental issues that are holding us back and will continue to hold us back if we don't solve it DM mainly which has been an issue for years that we haven't solved and a backup right wing back to Reese James and creativity as I was also said but I don't want to add too many problems because I don't want to be at like it can all be solved in one window but that's my point with Graham Potter that I'm going to give him even though I'll, I'll do fair criticism, if, he has, if he's done something wrong, I'll be fair and I'll say, you've done this wrong, you've done this wrong, but I'm not going to outright bash him. I'm definitely not going to compare it to Tuchel constantly, because I think we just need to move on from that. But I'm not going to outright bash him and ask for him to leave if he has to deal with these fundamental issues that have been holding us back for years, DM and a backup room back. So given the January window, he needs to target these problems, which reports say that he notices the midfield is a huge issue. And I mean, if he doesn't see a backup room back as a huge issue, I don't know what he's saying. Maybe we don't get one because Reece James comes back from injury, but for me, that'll be naivety because who knows if he gets injured again in the second half of the season. But I'm giving him that window to notice the issues and actually go out and solve it because it's clear that Todd Bowley is an ambitious owner, right? During the summer, Tuchel was fully backed. He could have gone who he wanted. And I understand it was unfair for everything, for everything to be burdened on Tuchel. He just wanted to be a coach, but that was the situation he was in at the end of the day. So that's just what he had to deal with. And there were still people out there. There were scouts, no matter how useless they may have been, but it wasn't a completely terrible situation. And if he really understood how big of an issue defence midfield would have been he would have labelled it as something that had to be addressed like he did with other positions for example centre back but he didn't and we left until deadline day and the only other real option we had during that whole summer was Frankie de Jong where we basically just sat there and waited for him to decide if he was going to take the pay cut or not and then he ended up just not taking it and staying anyway I think was, the, was what ended up happening so really it was a stupid situation and Graham Potts has been left with the holes in those, it, the holes that were left 
during that summer by not addressing those issues. So I'm always going to give him until the January window to see those problems. If he doesn't address those issues in January and he was had the means to in terms of funds, then that's when I'll have a problem. And that's when I won't hold back if we're having bad performances once again linking to these problems because you had a chance to solve it and you should have solved it. That's the stance I have. So I think people need to apply context. I don't think you need to bring up Tuco every single time. But if you're going to bring up Tuco, I'm going to come back with this context because it's fair, it's completely fair. It's what's holding back our squad and it's something that's affecting Graham Potter. And he's, he's had to deal with it because it wasn't dealt with in the summer window so that's pretty much what i wanted to say i don't know if it's been a bit of a rant it's been a rant but a very calm rant because i've not really got the energy to go crazy i just want people to relax a bit apply context situations and actually back chelsea rather than backing it's like your stands you're hating against players that you don't like even though they play for your club that you should still support them i mean have your opinion but why hate on a player i mean that's just too far they play for your club if they do well your club does well so why wouldn't you support that anyway so yeah, I do hope you enjoyed this video, but you probably didn't. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, comment down below, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.